Female reproductive system. Female reproductive system consists of the ovary, uterine tube, uterus, and vagina. Now, the ovary, uh, the primary sex organ, produces the, uh, the gamete or the ovum, which is what's responsible for fertilizing with the sperm to make a zygote. Um, in this diagram, we see the follicular phase, which is this primary follicle becomes a secondary follicle, which becomes a graphene follicle, and then ovulation occurs where the uh, ovum is then ejected out into the peritoneal cavity. The resultant corpus luteum is responsible in the luteal phase for making progesterone to ensure that the implantation in the endometrium is sufficient to sustain the life of that developing embryo. Um, here we have the aorta with the two ovaries down below. So the arterial supply is primarily through those gonadal arteries. That's what's supplying both ovaries. The gonadal arteries arise from the uh, just below the renal arteries on the aorta. Now the veins are not bilaterally symmetrical. This is similar to the male. The right gonadal vein uh, brings blood from the right ovary into the, directly into the IVC, where the left gonadal vein arises uh, and goes to the left renal vein and then to the IVC. So there's where that there's not that bilateral symmetry. Now the uterine tube is this tube that um, is close to the ovary with its fimbriae and then courses around to the uterus. The uterine tube is named after the anatomist fallopius and why it's also called fallopian tube. And because it transports the ovum, it is also called the oviduct. All of those are correct terms. Now this uterine tube, we see this cross-section uh, through the uterine tube and ovary where there is an ovum and then it's ovulated into the peritoneal cavity and then those fimbriae, those finger-like projections, will take that ovum and then bring it inside the lumen of this fallopian tube and then transport it down um, into the uterine tube. So the uterus is this, or also known as the womb, um, is the organ that uh, where the fetus gestates. So there's the fundus or the dome top part of the uterus. There's the uterine body and then there's the neck or the cervix of the uterus. If we were to take a speculum and place it inside the vagina, that's the view you would see with the blade of the speculum above, blade of the speculum below, and there's the cervix in that little thing that looks like a mouth. That's the external os of the cervix where menses or a baby will come out or a sperm will go in. So if we take a look at the uterus, we see that superimposed on this female that there's the fundus of the uterus and during pregnancy we notice how big and all of a sudden, wow, that, that fetus is a, the uterus and developing fe uh, fetus within the uterus is pushing right up against that diaphragm up above, intestines behind, and the bladder below. And so all the abdominal pelvic contents need to move around to make way for this developing fetus. Vagina is this structure that courses from the cervix down to the uh, perineum, or the uh, opening is located. And the vagina serves uh, three purposes. It's a uh, birth canal for a developing baby, where passageway of menses during a uh, period, and it's also the receptacle for the penis during intercourse. Uh, here we have a baby that's coming out and so it pushes up against and before going out the vagina look at the size of that vagina in the birth canal you now and that cervix just completely dilate and make room so those vaginal rugae make for a lot of room as the baby comes out and then also there's the uh, placenta being pulled away from the endometrium and the umbilical cord so the afterbirth is that uh, placenta coursing out of the vagina after birth Let's take a look at the perineum now. In the perineum, there's the clitoris, urethra, vagina, and the two labia. And so this clitoris is the homologue of the glans penis. It's the highest concentration of sensory neurons, and so that's the pleasure center for females during intercourse. The urethra is the external opening for the bladder and urethra for urine. Uh, that urethra is very short compared to the spongy urethra in males, and that's why it's more prone to infection. There's the vagina or the vaginal opening of the birth canal. And then there's our labia minoris. So if we were to now take that hairless uh, skin that flanks either side of the urethra and vagina and the top where the clitoris is located, we see this, where the sides of the labia minora 
are these vestibular bulbs, which is erectile tissue that engorges with blood during intercourse. But at the bottom, we have this gland. It's called the vestibular gland. It's a homologous to the bulbourethral gland, where it uh, secretes a lubricant to, out, uh, to the lining of the vaginal opening. So when the penis is inserted during intercourse, uh, it's nature's KY jelly. It lubricates that, and so the penis can be thrust in and out without uh, friction. Um, and then the labia majora, which is the homologue of the scrotal sac, and this is a flap of skin with adipose tissue that's usually uh, has surface with uh, pubic hair.